what we're going to talk about first. So let's look at face on. Watch your left wrist. Notice how it immediately starts moving into flexion. You start kind of yeah. bowing that wrist right away, right? Mm -hmm. And so the club face is really shut. Yeah. So now, as you've been watching a lot of the content, especially with the hack motion stuff, you know how much rotation there is in the, in the hands of the pros. Like they're really rotating a lot to get a lot of speed in there. And when you bow it like this and you get it that shut, you can't rotate because the club face is already shut. So then you're just gonna, you would just hook it off the planet, yes. right? So you're not going to do that. That's me. Oh, you, so you do try to release it sometimes. I for hook that. it. If I have problems, I hook it, especially as I get more tired in a round. Yeah, exactly. I, I just have good hands and I can save it a lot. Yeah. But I hook it a lot. Yeah. Well, this is exactly why. So if you go into flexion with your wrist right off the ball, you have nowhere else to go. And this is the hard part in golf swing. This is like why, you know, typically when people kind of like preset their hands at impact, like I know I want to be here, so I'm just going to start here. It doesn't really work well because you need to be able to move into quote unquote positions throughout the swing. But if you kind of start there, you don't give your body anywhere to move to or move through. So it's like, imagine a pitcher like knowing like, I'm going to throw a ball and I'm going to release it like this. So I'm just going to keep my wrist in this position the whole time. There's no speed there, right? So this is, a, this is going to be one of the big things that we have to fix. But the bigger thing, like these are, this is a symptom, right? This is, this is you saying, okay, I know I need to square the face. I know I need to add speed because that, that is golf, right? That's your whole job as a golfer. Mm -hmm. I need to add speed and I need to, to have the face pointing in the direction I want to. So when you're doing this and then, you know, you, you fold the right arm right away yeah. and, and the left arm's pushing across the body kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So what this is really telling us is that you're not, this is how you associate creating speed in the swing. So as you mentioned, you don't, you don't need to make a sh full shoulder turn because you've got that right arm kind of fully cocked and loaded as much as it can go. And so this is your idea of, okay, from here, this is how I'm gonna apply force to the shaft. It's just with my, my arms. And so as you come down, you do a great job of getting everything to kind of balance back out. Like right here, you're almost in a, in a perfect position. Almost, right? Like you're not in a bad spot from where you took it back from. Yeah. But there's nothing there. So now you can see the club face is rotating over really really hard because you're you've got that club face already shut so it's going to want to shut down on you really quick and so you're always going to be just knowing that that hook is there at, at the wrong time <laughs> if it wants to pop up its head so overall like release and stuff is really good but what what's really killing you is kind of like the bigger the bigger picture of the golf swing like what and this is this is what's difficult about this like what are you really trying to do what do you really want to do in the swing and once you understand that, then all of the stuff, the, the, the flaws, if, that you will, if you will, that happen in your swing, like the, having that face really shut, the wrist really bowed, not making a turn, all of those things don't make sense anymore once you have a very clear picture of this is what the golf swing is. And that's what I wanna do first, okay. is say, help you understand this is what the golf swing is really about. This is what you're really trying to do. First thing we gotta understand, is what are we really, really trying to do? When you're taking the club back like this, this is getting it set so that you can you know, easily come down with a pretty square face because you're already there, right? But there's no place for your hands to go to release. And the release point, the way that your hands have got to work is that they're going to be, instead of being bowed like this, we want to maintain a little bit of extension in this left wrist or a tiny bit of cupping till later in the downswing. And then from here, the wrists have to do this. This is the whole golf swing in a nutshell. Notice that my right wrist is moving into what we call flexion or you know, getting into a bowing position on the other side. But your hands doing this is the entire swing. And once you have this idea, you'll see that this doesn't work. Yeah, so a lot of times people are, you know, they become obsessed with bowing that wrist and Hogan made such a big deal out of it. And it is of course important to a degree, but it's what your hands are actively doing through that hitting area that determine what's really going to happen with your swing. Cause that's where all the speed comes from. But you have to get to the point, get this, there's a piston in the shaft. This is a new training aid that these guys are testing that when you release it properly, it snaps down at the bottom. But when your hands are doing this, you'll see like, It'd be very hard for me to get that piston to move. But if I snap it, do you hear the difference? Yeah. So I'm going to actually have you use this for a second. 
and you're going to work on getting, I'm going to have you put your hands right here. We're going to get them slightly, at this point it should be starting to bow, but you're going to get here and I want you to snap your wrists into this position. So how would you get that piston to slide down and into the shaft? Where do you want me to start? There? Yeah. Yeah. There. there. So now, what, relax your hands just a little bit. And now, what I want you to understand is how would you, forget golf for a second. Mm -hmm. Relax your hands a little bit more. There you go. How would you get, no, nope, still tensing up on it. How would you snap this club to get that piston that's up here to slide down that shaft and get it to do it at the ball? Just using your wrists. Yeah, there you go. Now, where did you hear it happen there? <laughs> Way out here, exactly, exactly. Scoot over just a little bit, so give yourself a little more room, yeah. Uh, so now each time you'll have to like, get it to go back down in there. So now get it to snap right here. Late, right? That's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna learn today, because at the end of the day, all that matters is you have speed right here. Yes. Right. I agree with that. So, uh, yeah, because I keep. I just. I've exactly. Done it so long. Yeah. It's really hard to break that it, habit. It is. So while he's practicing with this here, I'm gonna step in for just a second. I want you guys to understand that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna let you experiment with it for a minute because I want you to releasing try the club for own, speed get, help you understand and releasing the club to square the club face. Are one and the same. If you can't square the club face, you're not going to have speed. And if you don't understand how to produce speed, well, you won't well, be able to square the club face consistently. Yeah, yeah. I want you to That's what's what so you're... cool about what you're going to see as we go through this, Discovery is, the art of learning. is that he is learning how to both produce speed <laughs> and square <laughs> the club this. face simultaneously and through the exact go. same move at the exact same time. Getting there. Just keep going, a few more. Way closer, right? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, we're getting there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing to get there, but... This is the point. Th this should be a natural, instinctive thing, how to use your hands correctly to add speed. But it's not because we're so convoluted with all these different mechanical things and body movements and stuff that we forget what our hands are doing with the club. There you go. There you go. Do you feel you have more speed now? Yeah, what I'm trying to do is when I get to here, you know you make a circle, right? Mm -hmm. With your hands. So I'm trying to apply a force here. Exactly, exactly. That's when you have to because do it. Because if you're in a circle, and you're applying a force here, you're just going through the middle of the circle. Bingo. But if you're going here, it only makes sense that you're going to apply force that way. The only way you're going to get it to release down here is to release it up there. Up there, yeah. There you go. There you go. Now you're starting to understand the golf swing. This is the whole point. Yeah. If you don't do this right, I don't care what you do with the rest of your golf swing. It doesn't matter what you look like at the top, yeah. what, what your hands are doing, how you're set up, any of that right. stuff. It's all setting this up. That is the most important thing. And once you understand that it's all about speed and, and that speed, the cool thing about a proper release is that it not only adds speed, but it also squares the face. They're happening simultaneously. They're not independent things. You don't try to square the face, but that's what you've done. You've made your golf swing like, okay, I'm gonna square the face. So I'm just gonna bow it right away, okay. keep it hooded going back, and then I don't have to fight this slice anymore because okay. it's already square, so then I just kind of come through. But then you can't release it because you're just gonna hit yourself in the foot because the club face is gonna be so closed. So now what you gotta understand is that the release is adding speed and squaring the face. They are one and the same. You can't have one without the other. And so by me telling you how to release this, or not, I didn't tell you, you just figured it out by using this thing that you started adding speed, but you didn't have to worry about squaring the face because in order to release it properly, that club face has to be rotating through the hitting area. Didn't have to tell you to do that. You just started feeling it by hearing where this is releasing, right? Yeah. So that's the whole key. And everything that you're trying to do in your swing from this point forward is just making that happen naturally. It's setting yourself up for that to happen. That's it. So once you have that, then it's okay now, 
this doesn't make sense to take the club back like this anymore because you're never going to, you saw where the release was happening. It's way out here. Yeah. There's no speed there. Yeah. And that's why you're carrying it 200 yards instead of 250 yards. All of the speed is in exactly what you just did there. If you start releasing this and as you felt, you discovered it perfectly on your own. You have to, your intention of releasing this club has to be way out here. It can't happen down here. It's too late. You'll never, ever get it to release in time. It'll always release out here. That's why this training aid is so cool is because you hear it and you can actually hit balls with that, which is what I want you to do next. Okay. So now we can do the same thing, but put it into real world applique because when you hit that ball, the sound of the strike and that piston slamming down into the bottom of that shaft should be simultaneously. It should be happening exact same time. What'd you feel there? That was pretty close. It's pretty close, right? Yeah, I mean, compared to what I was doing before. Yeah, exactly. Before it was way out here. Exactly. And it's hard when you're hitting the ball. That's what's so important about a training aid is you have to be able to hit balls with it while you're using it or it's pointless. Perfect. The timing was immediately different. Yeah. I think now, this thing's gonna- I don't know if I'm taking it away correctly, but- We can fix all that stuff because you'll find that it'll, it'll make your release easier as you start adjusting your takeaway. Yeah. This thing's going to put me out of a job. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> a little late, right? A little late, yeah. I could feel the club face. Yeah. Um, I hit it off the toe or something weird. Pretty close. What you're going to find is the difference between that one and the second one. The second one was where they were timed perfectly. You could hear, you couldn't hear a distinction between the sound of the ball hitting the face and the piston sliding down, yes. right? They were like simultaneous. That's perfect. That's what we're looking for, right? That one was a little bit late, right? What you're going to find is you're going to have to be faster with your hands, faster with that agree, release your hands, which is really, this is your power, right? Mm -hmm. This is where all the speed is, is how this hand moves. This one, it can add some, but it's not nearly as forceful as this guy. So what you're gonna to wanna to feel with this right hand is you start throwing it way back here yeah. and throw it as hard as you can from immediately, start trying to release that angle until you get to the point where if you could, that it would happen back here, but you'll never get it to release that early. Never. What'd you feel? Uh, that was pretty close. Pretty I close. Think it was a little late, but a tiny bit late. A little bit. So you got to be even more aggressive. Get that wrist throwing the club head earlier. Same sound. That was close. It was the same time, right? Yeah, that was close. Yeah. If not exactly the same, it was yeah, it microseconds. Was, it was really close. So a couple notes in here as well. We're not trying to fix everything right now. What I'm trying to get him to do is feel releasing the club with speed so he can get speed, understand how to produce it, and then we can start dialing it back from there. Keep experimenting with it. Listen to the feedback from that and start trying to release it earlier and earlier and with more and more force from that right hand. There you, now, that was the same time, right? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this on video. Let's take a look at the takeaway. So the takeaway's still gotten it shut. But your left wrist, you, you compensated. So you bowed it immediately, yeah. but then you're like, that's not going to work. So you actually got back into extension because oh. you know if your wrist is in this position, you have something to snap. If yeah. it's like this at the top of your swing, your wrists don't work right. I didn't do that consciously. Though. Exactly. That's the whole point of this. This, <laughs> this stuff should be natural and instinctual. It shouldn't be something where we're like, oh, I got to make myself go here. Okay, now I got to go to position two. Now position three. Well, I was thinking about when you're doing like the hack motion about the wrist. And I think because you yeah. wanted the wrist more, not that you wanted it more just here. It's got to be slightly, slightly an extension. But then I was, when I was just practicing at home, I said, Okay, how can I consciously get it into that position? That's not easy to do. Yeah. You know, you, as you're swinging. You have to understand what you're trying to do down here with your hands. Yes. Once you understand what you're doing down here, then this stuff at the top happens naturally because you can't do this 
if this isn't in a reasonable spot. So you naturally got back into extension. Okay. So now you have something with your hands to be able to hit with. And then as you come down, we're really, really close to being in a really great impact position. We just gotta get the body to work a little bit better yeah. with it. But from there to being able to now have force, and this is what you should feel. You should feel like now I can actually be aggressive hitting the golf ball. I don't have to be like, oh God, I don't know where yeah. this is gonna go. I'm gonna fight a hook. Yeah. Should never ever enter your mind again. You wanna be like, I gotta go. Yeah, because my emotion, it always felt like, how can I hold on to exactly. the right spot to release it so it won't hook? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you've got all, and then you start, you know, if you start taking lessons, you start trying to build in all these different compensations around this misunderstood concept of what the golf swing is, right? Yeah. Now you know it's this, and now that I know how to do this, everything else just starts adjusting a little bit to make that more powerful, more under control, easier to do. And that's where all the speed comes from, to protect your back, protect your hip. Yeah. You've got to have the speed from this. You can do this stuff all day, it's never gonna hurt your body. Because when I, when I tweak my back, it's always this muscle running right along my spine right there. Yeah. That one I tweak okay. a lot. So that's gonna happen when you're trying to turn to hold the face open? Yeah. Because the only way you're gonna hold... So it would be this muscle right Yeah, there. so that's... Your spinal erectors are there. I can't remember what that's called. But it's also, you know... My anatomy class, but that's yeah. the one that causes me trouble. Well, that's... Think about why that's gonna happen, right? So let's say people have back problems, back pain for all sorts of reasons. But if you've got the club face like this, and you, again, your subconscious, your proprioception is gonna take over in the downswing. You're not gonna have time to think it through. Your brain's just gonna be like, okay, I gotta do something to keep this thing from going way left. Yeah. So you start rotating your body oh, okay. to hold the face open, but you put more stress on your back, yeah. right? If I'm like this, this is no stress on my back. Right. This is a lot more stress. Not that you can't do this, but once you've got a bad I back. why I hurt that so much. Exactly, because you're fighting that club face wanting to turn over instead of, and this is the thing about golf, the club face wants to turn over, right? So you can either fight it, and there's guys who turn a lot to fight that club face, that's one way to swing, or you can let it do what it wants to do and use that to your advantage instead of something that you're fighting against, yeah. right? So you keep feeling this, not this. And the more you start getting used to making short swings, which was the point of that rombo drill that I put out last week, was for you to learn to create speed from a very short swing. The only way to do that is to release your hands correctly, right? So if you go and just make a little swing, well, how else would I get any speed? I have to apply force to that shaft with my hands. And as you start doing that, this isn't gonna make any sense because you're gonna be, well, how would I apply force with my left wrist already bowed that much? And with your hand, your hands are super, super tight on the club. When I grabbed them, you, like every time you started to take the club back, you, you murdered it. Yeah. Because again, you're fighting holding that club face open. Instead, what would be ideal is if your hands were a little bit softer, because that'll allow your wrist to move faster. So you'll start going from this and holding off to this, and like, I actually want this thing a little bit more cup, because that gives me more leverage to throw that club at. And then if it's not shut, I can throw it more aggressively, and it's still gonna square up. 